Well, good evening, laddies, lurkers, and horkers. My name is Emotional Support Demon Woman, and today we are gonna spread misinformation about women. No, correct misinformation about women. Women aren't real. <laughs> this went really well. I'm sure they don't do. Oh, God. Well, good evening, Larius, Lassus, and Lassus, and welcome to the Click You Smell Absolutely Astounding today. And thank you for not clicking off the video after that atrocious intro. But the Emotional Support Demon is actually correct, despite its inability to sell this video. It's okay, Emotional Support Demon, I will support you emotionally. Just have you have supported me emotionally many times over. Emotional Support Demon coming back in stock permanently in March. So keep a lookout for it, you wonderful, beautiful being, if you missed it last time. Anyway, today we are going to look at r slash not how girls work, which is a beautiful fantasy land of wonder and nightmares. Everything from dating advice, very much this, to like just misinformation or bad anatomy or funny, really bad pickup lines. So we're going to look at it together and hopefully laugh through the pain, which is always easier as a group. Enjoy. Mwah. Ooh, laughing through the pain. Get yourself an emotional support demon after watching this video. That will support your emotions. <laughs> you see, that's how I sell plushies. People get traumatized by my videos. And then they're like, oh my god, I need something to hug. And then there's the plushie. What a business model. So, what brings you in today? Um, well, Doc, I got mugged. Mm-hmm. And shot? Mm-hmm. In the arm? Mm-hmm. And when was your last period? You see, I am very good at investigating symptoms as a doctor. There is blood in both, so you can very easily see how this would be mistaken. Fair point, Doc. <laughs> okay, no, it's not a fair point. But dear women, didn't you know that during the time of the month, you can just have cashier pieces of your arm fall off? You know, like, what's it called? Leprosy? Periods are leprosy. That's what we learned today. Moving on. Fathers send their daughters to wife school, state or privately funded. Women learn all the skills necessary to be a good wife. Cooking, cleaning, housemaking, minimal math for grocery shopping and measurements. <laughs> they can't learn more math than that because then they would know more than me, which would make me insecure. Child rearing, naughty classes when old enough, which according to people that write these kind of posts is like... Three and a half. Uh, fashion and modesty, animal caretaking, gardening, emotional support. You are a low to middle status man. Walk into wife school. Women are graded from E up to A and then S. This just sounds like you're walking through like, you know, a meat shop or something like that or cattle. Is this what it's like when you when you want to buy like a pig? Grades factored by technical skill, age, attractiveness, and personality. Graded women are separated by floor, each floor higher in the building. A higher grade woman. Step out of the elevator on your chosen floor. This feels like, you know, the Matrix thing where they're lying in these weird beds and stuff, but it's just a meat market instead of a simulated universe. Staff blows a whistle. Girls call to the assembly room. You walk in. Topless girls age 16 to... 22 lined up for you to choose. Each has a name tag with father's contact information. Is it like in the ear? Like with cattle as well? Is that like a nice little touch to this fantasy? Choose girl according to her grade and your status. Contact her father and make arrangements. Walk out with well-trained traditional wife. <laughs> My man just described human trafficking as his personal fantasy. Ah, I was thinking advanced livestock. <laughs> Some of these uh, horrific fanfics would make for pretty decent, like, post-apocalyptic horror novels or something like that, you know? That, that'd be a thing. My god. I'm not gonna lie, don't tell the feminists, but I would rather stay home and cook and clean. I would rather do it. When I tell you I love to cook and clean, just, just don't tell the feminists. How are you cutting that onion? And I love to do it for a man. I do. However, not outside of marriage. Absolutely not. That sounds like hell. I haven't heard a word you said. I'm just distraught by that onion method. So good. You can just tell he's proud. There's just something, I don't know. There's something within me as a woman. Maybe it's almost turning 25. They got me thinking. Ah, uh, 25, the crisis year. Yes, indeed. I remember when I turned 25. I why we wanted to work. What was, what, was the, what was the point? Like, there is... What are you doing? Satisfying about working. A man that takes care of you? A man that provides for you? You don't have to worry it? about anything? No bills? I will cook and clean all day. Like, what is the complaint? I'm making some fire food tonight. I'm going to serve it. And I'm just enjoying it. Yes, I'm crying over some onions. But is this what we fought for as women? 
I don't know. I'd rather cry over some onions than cry about a job. That's for sure. Girl, I'm almost crying over those onions. And I'm not even in the same room. God. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. If someone came up to me and be like, Click, you look like you would be a good house husband. How about that? I'd be like, heck yeah. Sounds like a sweet deal. But you know, you know what the difference is? I can cut onions better than this. What, what is this atrociousness? If you're gonna make the case for like housewifing. <laughs> Dear God. Honestly, that's a pretty good way of like debunking these sort of videos if they're like honestly looking for this sort of relationship, which is perfectly fine if you're into it, or when they're just like fishing for a certain demographic of like simpy people online. Can they actually cut the onion, yes or no? <laughs> the answer is no. Video debunked. <laughs> Adele's transformation is a kind reminder that you can achieve whatever you set your mind to. Um, the fact that she is a 15 times Grammy Award winner and y'all think her being skinny is her greatest accomplishment, I... As someone who lost a bunch myself, I can relate to that. Never ever in my entire life I got more praise, compliments and awe from people, random and well-known ones, than just for eating less and losing weight. Damn, I did many things in my life I'm proud of and no one cared. Losing weight was easy in comparison and this is what people think makes you a hero. Looks matter a lot in the world. I, I think we like to say that it doesn't matter, but if you've ever gone through a journey of, for example, weight loss, or when you grow up and you like, you're like a late bloomer or whatever, you realize how much it actually affects how people treat you. It's not the only thing that matters. I, I see that being tossed around a lot as well when people say you can never find love, for example, unless you're like a, like, like a supermodel, which obviously isn't true, just look around you. But looks do matter a lot. I remember the biggest realization I had when I grew up. I was like 19 or something like that that. When I started putting on weight, my skin cleared up and stuff, because I had a very awkward uh, teenage years. I grew way too fast in my late teens. I was very skinny, bad skin, bad hair, all that kind of jazz. And once I grew into myself and started maturing in a good way, the amount of like positive attention you got was night and day. The way people treated you, the way people approached you, all that kind of stuff just changed drastically. It's wild how much that actually matters to people compared to things that probably should matter more, like actual achievements or personality or how you act and how you treat people, etc. But I also suppose it's easy because it's the first thing you see in people and we are programmed to act in social context and someone who is like, you know, attractive looking is always going to have social clout because other people will also find them good looking. And I think there is a whole psychology and tribalism in that whole thing. But yeah, it's wild how much behavior around you changes when you go through those kind of physical transformations. It's absolutely wild. With these kind of topics, I'm also not saying that it's inherently evil or good or whatever. It's more like an observation of reality and how silly it gets sometimes. <laughs> I don't know, man. Roommate wanted. A single male 44 searching for roommate. Must be female aged 18, 25 and single. Must be willing to cook and clean. One bedroom apartment. You can use the couch until you're comfortable enough to share the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> no pets, no drinking, no drugs, and no male friends allowed. My home has a no closed door policy. This is for safety. You see, if you are taking a pee in the morning, you can't close the door for... Uh, for safety reasons. $400 a month. Call Owen on this number. <laughs> what a deal. Yippee! Hold on a second. So you're basically signing up for someone else to control your whole life and you live as their little fantasy maid that also does intimate activities with them, whether you like it or not, and you still pay rent for it? <laughs> it's like a crappy sugar daddy and you don't even get any sugar. Oh my god, what a bad deal. <laughs> I don't know who the cartoonist is, but this is the most succinct framing of this issue I have ever seen. You're not the carefree woman I married. Look at that puppy, that little baby, and the other baby, and the cooking, and the... Yeah, I can see why. This really resonates with something, doesn't it? I think a lot of things in life changes throughout the various chapters, and that is fine and to be expected. But I think also to have reasonable expectations around it, and also share the load that comes with it, is probably a healthy way to do it. If she menstruates, she's an adult. Kids don't menstruate. How young can you menstruate? Let's see now. Most girls get the first period when they're around 12. Look at that, and I think like the youngest is like 8 or something. Like, yeah, good, good stuff. Mr. Tweet person, you're not very correct now, are you? 
If she menstruates, she's not. Does that also mean she can vote and drive a car when she's 12? Or is it only for your, like, fantasy physical needs that that applies? Or is it like a universal thing? I would, I would, no, I wouldn't like to hear an expansion of this. This is atrocious. Old ugly women keep getting triggered and keep collecting cats. Your time is done after 25. <laughs> I can't help what I like. There has to be some sort of attraction. Age 18 to 25, when women turn down 95% of men because they're ugly. Uh, P word, G word, R word. Ages 25 plus, when men turn down 50% of women because they're old. Parentheses, ugly. I swear to God, people keep making these memes to just get upset about that never really happened. <laughs> you just make up people in cartoons to be angry about. I swear to God. My girlfriend does nothing during 20 minutes of adult fun time. Also her afterwards. <sighs> I don't know, man. If if this is really how you feel, which sounds weird, but if this is really how you feel, you should probably talk to your partner about it instead of making memes. This is very weird. Levels of pain. Slap. Childbirth. Kicked in the balls. Hi, everyone. Let's turn our cameras on. <laughs> I gotta feel that one. <laughs> I mean, maybe this meme isn't, like, particularly scientific, but it's just kind of funny, you know? It's just the intense pains of life that we can we can all relate to on some level. Not the men who downvoted you. Embarrassing. Being kicked in the balls is more painful than childbirth. It's just that childbirth lasts longer. How about we just enjoy this funny meme about Zoom meetings? How about that? It's like trying to argue that having a mild headache for a year is more painful than breaking your leg. <laughs> there it is, the comment which explains it good. A little tap, no, but a full force. Lift your feet off the ground, kick, yes. Now we're, now we're getting to the point from like a Zoom meeting meme. The scientific facts about being kicked in the balls and the force and the bodily reaction to it and are you lifted off the ground, which is one hell of a kick. Can we just laugh about the Zoom meme, please? <laughs> I don't feel- I don't feel like this rabbit hole today, man. Margaret Robbie is taking a short break from acting to focus on producing, because everybody is probably sick of the sight of her after Barbie. Starting to look like late 30s. Time to step aside and let younger, more talented actresses do a better job. Uh, 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 202 likes. I was gonna say no one asked, but apparently some people did, and... Man, that's sad. I think one thing I have learned, though, is just certain platforms you should never ever read comments on, right? One place of those are Instagram. They are the most brain-dead stuff I have ever seen in my life. It doesn't even have to be, like, outrageous stuff. Even in places where they are, like, relatively innocent, they're still just really dumb. <laughs> the same thing as TikTok, you know? The amount of misinformation and just rampant stuff on TikTok is wild. So, yeah, no, don't open comment sections. Don't interact with humanity. <laughs> it's okay. You're not missing much. Wow, I love your dress. Thanks. Don't, don't say it. Where did you get it? <laughs> Just a thrift store. Don't say it. Does it have pockets? Don't say- YES! IT HAS POCKETS! Honestly, pockets are, are pretty lit femme. One thing I am missing in a lot of clothes when I realize when I travel, but not otherwise, is what clothes have inner pockets or not. Because that is what protects you so much from like pickpocketing and that kind of stuff. Super nice when you're traveling and handling a lot of bags and that kind of stuff and going through certain areas which are notorious for pickpocketing. Get clothes with inner pockets. It will be a lifesaver. Ever since I started like being careful with uh, the wraps on my backpacks, for example, always having them around the leg of a chair if I sit down or always have stuff in my inner pockets, I have never lost anything. It, it's like, it's a perfect immunity. Um, sample size, me. Feminists, when the World War III draft starts, she'll be cooking in a metal bowl over an open gas stove. <laughs> What's with those, oh, this whole thing is uh, AI generated. I was about to say like the tools hanging there on the shelf and that second hand holding the bowl looks like a molded together like crab claw or something. I don't even know what's going on with that pepper in the background. That, that just looks deformed. Anyway, every single time, apparently. <laughs> saying every single time about something that has never happened once is wild. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think there would be a draft. I think we would probably all just blow up. So, you know, there there is that to take away from it. No need to worry about equality if we're all exploded. Hell yeah. Origin and development of a suffragette. Hold on. Are these, like, suffragette memes from, like, the 1920s? <gasps> oh my god, we found, like, hundred-year-old memes. 
At 15, a little pet. At 20, a little coquette. At 40, not married yet. At 50, a suffragette. <laughs> it rhymes, therefore it must be true. My wives joined the suffrage movement. I've suffered ever since. This is just like weird memes from a hundred years ago. Have we really gone full circle with this? That's the funniest part. If you just replace suffrage with anything else, these memes could literally be made last week. <laughs> that is wild. It has really just gone in a circle in a hundred years, hasn't it? Mind the baby, I must vote today. Oh yeah, you can see it's oldie timey because today is like with a dash. That's really funky how that's changed. Words and music by E.H. Webb. <laughs> can you watch the baby for like, I don't know, the 15 minutes it takes me to go put my little ballot in thing? Or you can both just take the baby for a walk and just toss it in this. <laughs> This is such a non-issue. Oh my god. Since Maya Margaret to become the suffragette. I'm not sure if Mario was invented back then, but that's what we're going with. Lyrics by... Oh my, this is... This was a whole thing. This is a whole thing. Mrs. John Bull, now you greedy boys, I shall not give you any more until I have helped myself. Political help, which is for her, but the Liberal Federation, Trade Unions, and Primrose League... They can starve because those politics are children. What? Down with man, husbands for old maids. At the suffragette meetings, you can hear some plain things and see them too. <laughs> but it keeps going. This is so much. Husbands working hours 3 a.m. to 12 p.m. Monday washing day, Tuesday darning, when house cleaning, thirst scrubbing, marketing, work of any sort, more work. Yes, old man is a lazy old wretch. <laughs> oh my god, when women vote. Honestly, that would be a really fun quiz for some kind of stream or something. Was this meme made in 1910? Or was this meme made in 2022? <laughs> oh my god, you can just scramble the text and like scramble the bit of the old-timey formulations. And, and then, it, it, then it's just a crapshoot. The concept of virginity was created by men who thought their peepees were so important it changed to a womanish. Ah, it does change who a woman is. She is permanently contaminated with other men's DNA. <coughs> oh god! It's so wild that's an actual, like, scientific theory. It's kind of on par with Flat Earth. It, it's like the Flat Earth for women's bodies. It's wild. Oh, we have some Game of Thrones characters, and here's no hole. Here's a small hole. Here's a bigger... and this... Who actually sat down and made this? Like, two of the characters are kids, man. <laughs> Dear God, I am just underemployed and keen to immoress. Lol, I get that. Give me a chance to miss you. I mean, I bought you flowers and showed the outlines of my pee, pee What more can I do? What more does a woman need? Space! <laughs> Wait. Wait, this is a real thing. <laughs> no way. No. <laughs> oh, you hear that, viewer at home? If you ever think your game is awkward or weak, you're fine, you're fine. The bar is literally, like, dug down in the dirt. I don't think you know how big 12 inches is. Do you see that? <laughs> Just in scale? Where is that going? You can wrap it around your head a couple of times. The average gal is gonna get about that much. Maybe this, if they're a pro. But the rest of that? Completely unmanageable. This is the biggest I've ever seen in real life. But this is fine. It's completely fine. This, fabulous. Almost too big. Definitely too big, sick day, ER, 27 club, and now I'm just skipping my next slide. <laughs> Anything after that is entirely unethical. I don't think we know what we're talking about. Oh yes, fellow men, you know when you get a little bit excited on a Friday night and you pass out from blood feud because, you know, you don't have enough blood in your body to support the organ. <laughs> Can relate, bro. <laughs> I think so many of these skewed expectations just come from adult films because there is no way you would get this from reality. Like, even statistically speaking, the likelihood of encountering something like this, IRL, are so incredibly minuscule that there is no way that would set, like, a standard expectation across the population. And, and like they said, for most people, maybe it won't even be a nice experience. So like, <laughs> it's fine. You're fine. <laughs> don't, don't, don't listen to people that say this kind of stuff.
So I was about to evict this college girl because she hasn't paid in three months. But I know she is broke and she has no one to rely on. I'm doing fine right now, so I decided to make an offer to her because I was feeling compassionate. She would paint the building and clear the entrance of snow with a shovel until February in lieu of rent payment. Do you know what she did? She rejected the offer and offered to do me instead. Guys, do you have any idea how much she owes me in rent? About 4,500 bucks. And I only asked her to paint the building and shovel the snow from the entrance. Do she really thinks her used up and worn out personal parts is worth 4,500 bucks for a single time? Do, do you think shoveling the snow once is worth 4,500 bucks? Uh, she's just an average looking girl. Premium W words charge less money than that, and they are better looking and developed than a 19 year old squirt like her. Oh, women truly have an inflated opinion of themselves. Or maybe she looks down on me because I'm not quite a looker and thinks I'm desperate. In any case, I laughed in her face. Ah ha ha. Uh, it really surprises me how women would rather do a stranger they are not even attracted to rather than doing some honest work. I'll take things that never happen for a thousand dollars. I'ma be honest, I don't think this is real. Partially the way it's written, of course, it just reads like a weird rage fanfic. But the second reason is that this is not a house owner. Because if you ever lived in the region in a house, or a house you, that you help take care of, for example, you know that you don't paint stuff in February when it's snowing. You paint and prepare stuff and renovate before winter hits, unless you're like really desperate. But at that point, you probably have more things to worry about with your property. So. This doesn't add up because I don't think this person is even a house owner because they don't know those very, very, very basic specific facts about uh, maintaining a property. So, uh, nah, this is, <laughs> this is obviously fake. My child will drink formula. My children will thrive on Bob milk. <laughs> what? <laughs> So here is one girl with pink hair and a bunch of posters, and the picture looks like it's taken in, I don't know, 2003. And here is a family. Yes, plus. No! Stop having babies, you're literally ruining the planet! Haha, <laughs> no! Holy blurble. I have both of these friends, and neither have given a single crap if the other chooses to procreate. These goofy goobers love to pretend that everyone exists in an echo chamber. Yeah, even your typical friend circle usually has multiple examples of both of these people, if you just spend some time outside and socializing. Most people don't care that much about other people's choices. You know, 90% of people don't really care if you choose to have a child or choose to do this or that. And I also feel in this example, the pictures are just taken in vastly different stages of life as well. So it's just, it's just weird, man. Oh, women. Choosing a Doberman, Rottweiler, Pitbull, German Shepherd, or other aggressive dog breeds reveals your lack of and your desire for masculine presence in your life. It also pushes him away. He sees the roots and he won't know part of it. Are you kidding me? If someone is good with animals and they have a good boy I can pet? That, what? He sees how you're trying to put a masculine in its place by giving it a narrowly defined role. A role that you control. I'm gonna be honest, one thing that comes to mind when I'm reading this very atrocious text is that someone once said that babies and dogs are always brutally honest. Which is kind of true, if they get bad vibes, you can tell. So maybe that's why they don't like women that have dogs, because the dogs never like them, because they give really weird vibes, you know? <laughs> dogs are the ultimate vibe check. The man you really want can be trained to obey you, and you know that! These sort of posts very much go in the same category as that wild post from a while back, when someone was ranting about how people own dogs because they miss the feeling of having slaves, or something like that. It just feels like you're applying something completely wild and unrelated to something super mundane and everyday. Like, <laughs> I don't think it's that deep. People just like puppies, man. Get a lap dog instead. A dog that will burrow into your womb and sleep soundly. Keep that space warm. If it wasn't weird enough already, we just made it weirder. Somehow. Your man will know what to do with that. <coughs> Goody. Wow, what a treat. Nice. Female anus too close to Vajujay? Uh, hi, I have been with a few women in my life, and one thing I have noticed is that the female butt is incredibly close to the Vajujay. In fact, they're barely an inch apart. I'm not sure about other guys, but doesn't this disturb you? It feels like a design flaw in women, actually, like they're supposed to be so feminine and beautiful, yet this ghastly little oversight is ruining everything. Somehow it feels to me that women should be more aware of this flaw and should affect 
affect their confidence. <laughs> they just walk around all day, be like, Oh no, my butt is kind of close to the other parts down there. Oh, what the design flaw. Steve, you realize that people literally eat ass, right? Do you realize that, Steve? The people eat ass? Huh? Anyway, so, uh, let's keep reading, shall we? Um, whether I see a so-called beautiful woman walking down the street so carefree thinking that she's all that, I just remember her butt is only one inch away from her personal pot and laugh her into oblivion. You just see someone walking down the street just like, ah, oh, I am a woman having a good day. And you just go up to them, like, in your mind, like, oh, their butt is close to other body parts that would be close to a butt. And you just go up to this random person like, ha ha ha! Do you, do you realize how this would look? This is absolutely unhinged. Oh, women, please accept that they're too close together. <laughs> Let it negatively affect your confidence. And so make yourself more readily available, not only as a result. After all, we're having to sleep with a creature whose butt is only one inch away from the vajuje. I mean, technically speaking, if you want to be, would, wouldn't your own balls be closer to your own butt? Than, than this example, because they're actually like slightly hanging down and hence getting closer. And th and then the whole argument would just cancel out, right? Because the argument across all humans would just be, everything is all always kind of close to butts, so it just cancels out, so why care? <laughs> you know? But I guess that doesn't apply. You should not make it this difficult. It's unappetizing enough as it is. We are doing you a favor. What's the favor? What is the favor? Men, do not let women forget this flaw and do not forgive them for it. Remind them of it constantly, lest they get inflated egos and think they're all that. They are just too close together. Sorry, but it's true. I just imagine a beautiful parallel universe where every class in school, every meeting at work is started with the sentence, Hi everyone, good morning, remember that your butt is too close to other parts of your body. Anyway, let's get on with the day, shall we? <sighs> what a wonderful world it could be. How to impress a girl, nine tips. How to make a girl like you. Never listen to girls on how to get girls. If you're trying to catch fish, you don't ask another fish. You ask the fishermen. What? What's the problem? Fisherman is a word. It is, and women aren't fish. It's a simple analogy which could be used with men as well. There's literally no need to get too offended. Ooh, his profile literally has a fedora, isn't that cute? Some people don't understand analogies. Why learn an analogy when it's easier to be offended? I mean, you do have the old saying like there's plenty of fish in the sea, which is pretty gender neutral, I suppose. So in that way, I guess it's fine. When it comes to dating, I don't know, just, just don't get sucked down rabbit holes. I would say the further down rabbit holes you get, no matter which rabbit hole it is, the further disconnected from reality it gets, or, or the more nitpicky about reality it gets. You know, it, it points out very specific parts and blows it out of proportion and pretends it's all there is. So that's one lesson. Don't get sucked down rabbit holes. Maybe it's easier said than done. You take care of the children and I will take care of us. Oh, I'm the happiest of a man in the world. Stop playing dolls and bojacks. <laughs> oh my God. That's really what it is, isn't it? Holy crap. This is, this is like 2024 Barbie. Watch what you're wearing. If you feel you may naughtily assault somebody, it's best to wear a shirt that says r wordist so that others can steer clear. Honestly? Yeah, that's a pretty fair point. Yeah. 90s, mileage, 30 kilometers, dignity, parentheses, yes, engine, used like new, four kids with the same father, 1940 to 1999, versus AMA, 2000, mileage, 650,000 kilometers. What do you... Oh. Is, is the mileage referring to, like, the amount of length of personal part received in reference to intimate activities? Is that what this metric is referring to? <laughs> oh dear. Parentheses, no dignity. Engine, beyond repair. Four kids with four different fathers. 2000 to 2004. I am 35, and it's hilarious seeing these incels start praising the 90s as if all couples were staying together. They weren't. It was just as messy as it's always been. Also, if people did not do it back then, I think Gen X had like the most naughty partners on average. And Gen Z is having less naughties than any generation prior to having naughties for the first time later. And before then, it was millennials. So 2000 plus are literally the two generations having less naughties compared to the Gens in the 1944 to 1999. Oh yes indeed, we should just go back to ye olden days, my god. <laughs> Where you would just die from random stuff sometimes. 
that's fun, to the lady who stopped me with my drunk girlfriend. Thank you. I was out with my girlfriend who definitely had one too many that night. As I was wobbling her back to my car, a young lady politely questioned me if I needed help and what my relationship to the girl was. When I said it was my girlfriend, she asked if I had a picture on my phone. I showed her a couple and she explained that she was just watching out for her and wasn't trying to offend but protect. She helped me walk her to the car. I don't think everyone would be cool with this, but it certainly is nice to know that someone was looking out for another person who was definitely not in the best state and able to defend themselves. I am scared someone would be in danger doing this randomly, but this was a nice gesture. I don't know, man. If some random stranger thought they were entitled to have me prove my GF was my GF, I think that would bring out an ugly side of me. We found him, girls. Get the coppers. <laughs> After reading some of these comments, I have a stupid question for the ladies. If you're by yourself or with a friend, why do you drink to the point where you willfully put yourself in danger of being essay or even kidnapped? At what point do you say stop, I'm losing control of my being, and this is not only a dangerous position to be in, but there is no one here for me to rely on? Men do it all the time and don't have to worry. I personally think that no one should get blackout drunk. It's not good for you and it's not good with the positions it can put you in. With that said, that's not an excuse to be victimized by certain things. It's never an excuse. That's the thing. And I think looking out for people is just the right way to go about it. Because the odds of two people being in the vicinity of, of this passed out person that don't know each other, both being exploitative, are quite low compared to just one person seeking them out being exploitative if that makes sense. I had one experience a bunch of years ago, it's a quite a long time ago. I was traveling home to where I lived at the time uh, on public transport and there was this girl on the same public transport who was very obviously on something and kind of passed out. And uh, <clears throat> we were a couple of people helping her get off the public transport because otherwise, you know, it's the end station and, you know, it's winter, etc, etc. What surprised me is that Everyone, including the other ladies, just kind of rushed away the moment like the other transports were coming to pick people up. And I was just left there with this random girl alone. And, and no one even thought to be like, oh, there's just this random dude with this girl that no one knows because we're all just strangers on public transport. So I called an ambulance to have her picked up because it was very obvious she wasn't drunk. She was like phasing in and out of consciousness and acting really weird. I think she had some kind of, you know, date or drug. It was quite quite nasty. I remember how annoying the, the the person in the phone was that when I called the emergency number, they were like, you have to put her on the ground sideways so she doesn't, you know, suffocate on her barf. And it's like, she's not barfing and I'm not putting her in like the mud pile on, on the ground. Like, <laughs> please. <laughs> But anyway, she was picked up and everything worked out fine at the end. But that surprised me a bit. If you see someone in that state of mind, ensure that at the very least not alone with a stranger. Because like I said, the odds of like multiple people being around them and everyone being like weird intentions is very, very low. Only one person staying with them, you know, it can go one way or another. So uh, yeah, that was that was one experience that was like negatively surprised with uh, with how little people cared. Um, it was it was a bit disappointing, but everything worked out well in the end, luckily. As rad as you seem, I might be too short. I am 5'10". 5'10 isn't short. Too short? Haha, <laughs> height isn't a thing for me. I would pick a genuine smile over it any day without hesitation. Well, I think you might be the first gal on Tinder not obsessed with height. Haha, <laughs> I'm sorry, I do not understand being obsessed with something one cannot control. I think it's also such an overplayed meme from Tinder specifically, you know? <laughs> Tinder is such a weird bubble, and the demographic difference itself on Tinder, also with how much marketing and stuff goes on there, should tell you it's not a good site for dating. I mean, the fact that 80% of people on Tinder are men should tell you roughly all you need to know about what it's gonna be like to try to date as a straight dude on Tinder. It's fine for gay dudes. It's very overwhelming for women. It's like a desert for straight men. You know, that, that's, that's sort of how it goes. There are better places than Tinder for, for dating. Um, e even just other apps are better than Tinder. Tinder is like the worst one. No hymen, no diamond. Real men don't settle for blown out street meat. It gets, it gets even more like sad when you realize the people writing this don't, don't even know about the anatomy parts around this, right? It's like, it's wild, fam. How are we gonna put expectations on some of you don't know how it works? Oh my god. This is the figure and manner of dress that had your grandfather making 12 babies and paying all the bills. Oh my, what? No. No. Alpha. Ooh, James Bond profile picture. Then you know it's a scientific source. Men are allowed to have multiple wives. Met have the, you mean men? Met have the right and responsibility to discipline, physical and otherwise, their wives. 
allowed to have multiple wives? Where? I mean, where? At least where I live. I don't even think that's legal. <laughs> you know? Men are the earthly lords of their wives. Wives should bow to the husband. Wives are the property of men. Naughty and women were created for men. The extent to which women can experience pleasure was instilled to further the man's naughty experience. A wife who argues with a husband is sinning. Isn't, isn't that convenient? A wife who is not a homemaker is blaspheming God's word. Biblically, when a girl starts to bleed, she is regarded as a woman and fit for marriage. Yeah, what was it? Like, did the average age of 12 or whatever? You... Great, thanks. Wives are not allowed to deny the husband's naughties. Doing so is considered fornication and grounds for divorce. Oh no. Oh, divorce. What a... Oh, this so sounds like such a good thing to be in. Oh no. Pretty legs as a girl is important. All them scars and dots on your legs is not cute. <sighs> I'm not even surprised anymore when I see these wonderful takes come out of Twitter. Mmm, goody. As a grown adult woman, why don't you wear makeup? Women who don't wear makeup, I think they are lesbians. Learn to grammar, for God's sake! 44,000 people saw this. You, you let 44,000 pairs of eyeballs see this. Shame on you. Uh, women are a burden. That means women who is a financial liability on her husband, she is also a huge emotional burden. Look at this AI-generated picture about this, like, cartoonishly big person and this, this very thin person on a bike. And <laughs> what is it with, like, these weird messages and AI images? Haven't we seen this multiple times in this video alone? Oh! <sighs> Out of all the things AI could be used for, this is where we ended up. <sighs> Maybe an apocalypse would be better. A woman with an X is a red flag. An X implies any man who's been in her fallopian tubes. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> it's not of if, but when she will cheat with one of those Xs. Learn or perish. <laughs> what do you mean, perish? That's, that's pretty dramatic. I'm gonna be honest, cheating sucks, but, but perish sounds very... Do you think you're gonna get Thanos snapped? B because someone cheated? That's weird. Fallopian tubes. At least it's nice that you can figure out right away that someone has no idea what they're talking about in like the second sentence of their post. So in that way, it's very nice. You can call BS right away. Men, after a few drinks, wanna drink some more? Yes. Women, ah, da, 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 da. Speak for yourself. My god. When he says he's finally rattled to settle down. <laughs> Just blew up! Oh, oh no! Always leave the toilet seat up to help train your lady. Unless you want her to be some dumb birch that blindly backs into objects with her butthole exposed. What is... What? What? Okay, I know this is really controversial because I argued this in, in another video and I found out like the majority of men actually stand up and pee at home, which is wild. In public, I understand why, because public toilets, especially men's ones, are quite messy. I don't want to touch that if I can get away from it. But at home, if you have ever stood up and peed with shorts on, you, you know how gross that is. You know, why would you do this at home and give you like extra toilet cleaning homework for no reason? Uh, my God, I know this is controversial, but Jesus Christ, why? And the rotet, I don't sleep with vaccinated women. Ah, vaccines work, y'all! <laughs> Woo! Ah, after scrolling the internet for many a year, I have seen many odd dating standards. This one never ceases to amaze. If a female tell me she likes pickles, I know her pH balance is off. Men should have to take a quiz on how female bodies work before being allowed to touch one. <laughs> Honestly, I think that's like what the sex ed in school is for. But I don't know what happened, man. It feels like that never happened. I feel so gaslit. Like, after reading so many of these posts, I'm like, did sex ed never happen? Or is this something I just dreamed about <laughs> having? Because there's no way so many people missed it. And where does the argument about pickles come from? I mean, to be fair, we never talked about pickles in sex ed, so maybe that's why. How women view height. 6'2", 6'0", 5'11", and 5'10". Look at that. I mean, more like uh, the 1% of women on Tinder who get memed on on Reddit, I would say. There are certainly people that think this. The same kind of people that always push the push the PP size stuff, but they don't actually know what the measurements mean. IRL. You know, I've, I've seen this post reiterated so many times. For example, when there is a girl coming over with her boyfriend who's 6'2", and then the sister also has a boyfriend who's 6'2", and it turns out the boyfriend who claimed they were 6'2 were only like 5'10. But the other girl doesn't know the difference because, you know, she's short enough that 
everyone is just registered as tall and that number looks good on paper. So, you know, there are some people that don't know what they're asking and that is fair. But it's hardly a majority of people if you go out into the real world, right? This is like a very specific, very like loud minority, specifically on like weird dating apps and stuff that are very preachy about it. And then that gets memed on and it gets like put in the mainstream online. Most people aren't like this. And that's a good thing. 31. Exact match. This person meets all your preferences. I am a father to three beautiful, amazing little naughty trophies. I've heard a lot of, like, uh, nicknames for your loved ones or partners or kids, you know. Little Muffin Ball, little Snuggle Goblin, little Smurgen Hergen. This ain't it, fam. Hey, can I ask you a question? Some guy. Oh boy, that's never a good sign. He's for sure going to ask me something super gross and weird. But uh, what if he's serious? I should give him a chance. Sure, go ahead. Is it okay that I want your bobs on my- I KNEW IT! <laughs> It's never a good thing. It's never a good thing. Please, don't you see how misogynistic your church and fellow believers are? You don't deserve being an incubator. I would treat you like a queen. I am not sleeping with you. Is there a deeper meaning to this? Or is that literally the whole meme? It's like, be with me instead. And then no. There are, there are no lines to read between. I read a short story where a woman character always looked forward to her period because it was a reminder of her womanness. And yes, the story was in fact written by a male. My uterus hits the self-destruct button and tissue and blood begins falling out of my vajuje. Music drops. Shanina Twain boys, let's go girls! So woo! Men and women are not equal. Yes, they are. Mm? We can do anything a man can do. Are you happy when you get unsolicited nudes in your DMs? Uh, are, like, the average man happy about that, though? Like, I think some might be. It's certainly a different vibe to it, if I put it that way. So it, it's a little bit different, I suppose. But I'm not sure if I've ever been particularly psyched about it. If it's just random unsolicited stuff, you know? It's just a little bit weird. <laughs> oh my god, it's an entire compilation of, like, GFs. All right, let's dig into it, shall we? Clingy GF. I love cute things. An example is you. And on, are you feeling better? Please don't ditch me blushes. I'm a virgin. I love your optimists. Am I bothering you? How does love work? Sorry for all my fantasies. I love shipping people and characters. So that's the clingy GF. Then we have rural innocent Christian <laughs> GF. This is getting really specific really fast. Hey, Anon, let's go ride horses. See you at church tomorrow. Let's not move too fast, Anon. I want to make sure you're the right one. Oh my, Anon, I've never done this before. Let's go swimming. It's okay, it's still through clothes. <laughs> Masochist Crusader GF. Let's go fight the big monster. Stop calling me a... L L I don't even know what that word is, Anon. Is it just misspelled on purpose? Stubs toe and... And reaches the zenith of experience. Short GF. Where is your hoodie like a dress? Easy to pick up and do things against the wall. Cool, that's enough of that one. Silence enjoying GF. <laughs> what is that outfit? Words are very unnecessary, Anon. They can only do harm after naughty time. Anon, you know pleasures remain, but so does the pain. Don't promise anything to me. Vows are spoken to be broken. You bought me a birthday present? You shouldn't. All I ever needed is here in my arms. Kisses you. My feelings are intense. Your words are trivial. I'm starting to feel like posts like this are like generated by either AI or aliens. It's one of the two. The... What? Woefully oblivious GF. Ha huh, yeah, I would do anything for you. A collar? Are we trying out a new knirk? Okay. Childhood friends. Yeah, it just keeps going. The 19-year-old humor. What is a humor? Uh, what is a humor? The humor are a warlike republic located in the southwest of Palisade. The Umerians are known for their fighting ships, even though most of their older ships were destroyed by a Palisidian mothership. The Umerian engineers have now created a mothership of their own to reclaim their lost planets. Okay, so anyway, schlicks off two voice lines of her husbando thrice a day. Minimum. Grooms. No? Did I even read the right wiki? We're gonna move on. It can't get worse, right? Arabic Princess GF. Rich as frick is okay to be... Uh... 
Very bad physical things. Okay, next next one. It surely can't get worse now. AspyGF only wants to play video games, I assume. Explains lore of her favorite JRPG to you in detail. Which cosplay as any character you want her to dress as? Asexual. Will do naughty things in exchange for toy slash games. All right. Uh, Art Ho GF. Feminist. You can't tell if she has BBD. She slash her. A cab bloom is probably cheating on you with black guy, passive aggressive, liberal arts degree, doomer GF, <laughs> depressed, you should find someone better, 137 on IQ test, BPD artist, uses Tumblr and or Twitter, bisexual, will threaten to do horrible things to self if you leave her. We lash out at you for no reason. Extremely insecure. We'll never admit her father was right about her career. What? Ah, there are few things that will flabbergast me at this stage in my beautiful online career, but sometimes it still happens, and I'm not sure if that should make me concerned or giddy with excitement that there is still things to explore. Maybe a bit of both. Things to do to keep your man humble. Tell him his pee pee is fine or normal. Casually compare him to other men. Give one word answers. Avoid eye contact and lean away. Lavish more attention on your dog than him. Tell him you need a break from texting. Gonna do all of these on my GF. Thanks for the manipulation advice. You are hateful. Ah, gonna tell my GF that her pee pee is fine. Yes, indeed. That's a wholesome way to round off this absolutely atrocious video. <laughs> Thank you so much for for scouring through this train wreck of a video together with me. I do hope you enjoyed your stay as much as I enjoyed having you here. Remember, emotional support team is coming back permanently, uh, probably in March. Absolutely gorgeous. Mwah. You're such a beautiful little boy, aren't you? And I will see you again in the very near future. Take care.